over the hills and far away. Time for Teletubbies. <laughs> Teletubbies was a kids TV series that premiered on cable in the late 90s and 2000s about a group of multicolored creatures with televisions implanted in their stomachs. This show also featured a living vacuum by the name of Nunu and the disembodied head of a newborn baby, which takes the place of the sun. Hearing this summary, you may be wondering, what the actual fuck did I just say? But buckle up, folks, because this version, the version you're all familiar with, this is the more normal version. Introducing the Elder Tubbies. Created by One Jar Arts, an eldritch, nightmarish distortion of these nostalgic creatures from childhood. The Council of Elder Tubbies. The Council gathers after a long night. Only one more viewer to collect before the break of dawn. Elder Tubby Tinky Winky, the greeter. Elder Tubby Dipsy. The Curious, Elder Tubby Lala, the Maternal, Elder Tubby Poe, the Sovereign. Along the lines of Gorefield, another nightmarish distortion of a simple yet incredibly popular media franchise to an unknowable extent. This depiction reflects how truly otherworldly the concepts in the show actually are. It takes into account the questions the more seasoned viewer must have. What exactly are these creatures? Isn't it strange how happy the Teletubbies are to have a TV wired directly into their gut? How do you think you would truly react if you saw a pack of humanoid creatures with screens bored into the bare flesh of their stomachs? With joy? Is it me? Or is Elder Tubby Lala kinda hot for some fucked up reason? Why does the sun have a face? And why is it the face of a baby? Rather than just suspending disbelief and accepting that's how the Teletubbies world is, or answering these questions, Elder Tubbies weaves a sense of unknowability into this world. Instead of just ignoring the strange aspects of the series and going on with a simple happy-go-lucky storyline, Elder Tubbies fixates on them and exaggerates them. Nunu is a perfect example of this. In the regular Teletubbies show, he cleans up after any messes in the Teletubbies world. And he's happy. And that's it. Not so much the case in Elder Tubbies. Nunu's story goes a little something like this. Elder Nunu, the Vacant. They say the machine once lived coexistent with the Tubbies. However, as they grew older, larger, and wiser, the machine instead grew restless and jealous, for its stagnant shell had only served the same hollow purpose throughout the years. The machine left the group and wandered the forest in search of the vitality and life it so severely craved. Over time, it amassed pounds upon pounds of flesh, and it indeed began to grow larger. Yet, it felt empty all the same. Perhaps one more body, one more limb, one more lung, one more heart. Maybe then, Nunu would feel alive. Well, that was creepy as shit. Anyways, vacuums are often metaphors for empty spaces or endless hunger. Nunu, being a living vacuum, was ripe for symbolism about consumption and filling a void. And now having an existence that doesn't provide satisfaction can lead one to a destructive cycle revolving around filling said emptiness. <laughs> Couldn't be me. The fallacy of looking for the answer to a spiritual problem with material means. This metaphor is taken one step further, with Nunu's endless consumption swelling him into a mass of flesh. As he grew, he didn't get any more satiated. His larger body only requires more and more to sustain itself. Nunu's story proves that throwing more into the bottomless pit doesn't shrink the hunger, but instead grows the appetite. I wonder if that's a heavy-handed commentary on any systems in any societies, wink wink. What the hell am I talking about again? Elder Sun Baby, the Daymaker. Over the hills and far away, the Elder Tubby Council gathered with their collected viewers, unprepared for what awaited them beyond the horizon. Only the lucky few survived the long night of wandering through the woods, but it would be worth all the risk just to watch the sun rise. Normally obscured by the infinite maze of trees and mist, there exists a clearing where the sun shines unfiltered, the path to which is only known by the Elder Tubbies. Catching a glimpse of the Elder Tubby during the long night is a blessing in itself. Being a chosen viewer, an experience embedded in legend. There it was, the first signs of light breaking the horizon. Radiant beams rose in the distance with dancing rays. The previous distant chanting grew louder, echoes surrounding the viewer. 
The sky brightened, then became brighter still, the sounds deafening, the sun blinding, and then a face. Time for Teletubbies. Time for Teletubbies. Say hello. This show primarily takes place during the day, or at least to my knowledge, because you're not gonna make me watch every fucking Teletubbies episode ever made. Therefore, the Sun Baby in the Eldritch depiction acts as the timekeeper for the entire world. Life only moves when the weird Sun Baby does, or some shit. The interesting thing about this fresh, weird, creepy ass depiction of Teletubbies is that it's essentially the same show, but the art style and narration is just a bit different. If you look at any of the themes explored in Elder Tubbies, it's the same as in the original show. It just distorts it and takes it a bit further. I mean, if you take a look at the Teletubbies character descriptions next to the Elder Tubbies character descriptions, it perfectly corresponds. Tinky Winky is the Elder Greeter, and in Teletubbies, he always goes first. Nunu exists solely to consume refuse in both iterations. He's just a little bit more pissed about it in the new one. Consuming refuse might sound like a terrible existence, but it's important to remember that one man's hell is another man's fetish. The Sun Baby is technically still what he was before, a giant solar baby monster. It's almost as if they're in the exact same universe. We just have a better understanding of how the world works in the Elder Tubby's description. A creature with a television wired into its bowels doesn't seem natural. I've never seen a living vacuum in real life, and the world's sun is distinctly lacking in infants' faces. In both worlds, something else is going on. The only way to truly explain all that weird shit in a way that would make sense would be to acknowledge the ramifications behind what's presented. It really is true what they say. Ignorance is bliss, and I just stole that from you. What's more likely, that a creature would be born with a TV in its chest, or that some sort of monstrous interference would cause it to be engineered like that? That a vacuum, a machine made to consume refuse, when endowed with sentience would ever have enough to consume, or that it would consume and grow uncontained? That the sun would have the face of a human baby, even though there's no other documented humans in that universe just because it's fun, or that it's actually a part of a giant creature, and most of that creature's body looms just outside the visible spectrum of our atmosphere. Honestly, I'm not sure of the answer to any of those questions, but it makes you think, doesn't it? One thing that really stuck with me about this lore is the idea of collecting viewers. This is likely connected to the idea of the original source material being a TV show, and the fact that shows are created for viewers. Viewers being collected could refer to the kind of objectification that happens to the viewer when the view gets monetized. But hey, I'm a YouTube creator, and when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Elder Moon Baby, the Dreamcatcher. Through the fog and further beyond, the Elder Tubby Council heard its cry. It was a different cry, one not heard of for centuries. It was a whisper at first, but soon it waxed and waned with siren allure, guiding the Council through the maze of mist to a new forest clearing. Could it be? The long-lost twin? There it was, a luminescent hum breaking over the trees, casting a cold light across the midnight sky. Brighter it grew as its hands spilled over with collected dreams and nightmares. Still more hands reached in towards its belly, fingers gripping tight. It began to pull wider and wider until its body gave way to reveal a vast opening, infinitely dark and impossibly deep. The melancholic cry then morphed into an inviting harmony as it perched steady, stomach wide, beckoning entry into the forbidden void. Time for Teletubbies. Do you enter? The eclipse of the elder babies. The forest was quiet, the sky cloudless and vastly deep. The spectacle above. This was anything but scheduled programming. It was a lost episode. Forbidden footage. Unscripted. Redacted. The Elder Sun Baby and Elder Moon Baby were crossing paths in an unprecedented cosmic eclipse. The twins illuminated their halos with a faint, rhythmic blinking. Then brighter, with increasingly intense bloom, they raised their heads up high and opened their mouths, letting loose a haunting wail accompanied by rolling tears. Soon, galaxies far off began to twinkle in synchrony as distant alien elder children joined their desperate call. The earth was trembling, and the skies were blindingly bright, a signal that could be seen from across the universe. It was a cry for help that could be quelled by only one. Do not fret, children. Everything will be okay. Mother will be here soon. Holy shit! 
time for Teletubbies is right. It appears that the Elder Tubby's lore doesn't stop where the show does. Jar Arts, the author of Teletubbies, expanded upon this world with his own additions. His first edition, the mirror image of the Sun Baby, the Moon Baby. Oh, he can have a friend. The unexpected crossing of paths of which seems to have stirred the entire galaxy, which may reveal the deeper lore behind the Elder Tubbies. Anyone else wonder what's up with the giant astral baby collision, or is it just me? Evidently, the Sun and Moon Baby had never come together before. When they finally met, they output some sort of signal into the universe. Responding to the Sky Baby signal, galaxies began to react as if they were receiving this message. <laughs> Looks like the key to solving the Fermi Paradox was just Teletubbies this whole time. Why does anybody even try? The text also alludes to alien elder children, and a mother figure. I believe that these paragraphs are huge major hints in the story of this world. The mother being, whatever it may be, gave birth to the astral babies and elder tubbies out of some giant sky pussy or something, and then left them across the universe. However, what other elder tubbies exist out there? What the signal means, or what the mother figure did this for is still a mystery. Oh boy, I sure hope that there's more entries that elaborate on exactly what the fuck questions that I made up. Elder Tubby Zoo, the pioneer, rooted fingers braced deep into the soft, alien terrain. The alien elder tubby was one of many pioneers, sowed by mother across seed planets scattered throughout space and time. The elder tubby subtly shifted its tunnel of antennae to amplify the faint, few signals which made it through the foreign planet's thick atmosphere. Meanwhile, alien tubby nymphs gathered patiently below as rainbow waveform hues buzzed from the elder's glowing belly. Finally, the static began to clear. The family tuned into scheduled programming as the misty morning was greeted by a familiar melody, the anthem of the universe. Time for Teletubbies. Elder Tubby Erd, the Stone Sword Gatekeeper. Time was lost to the tarnished four as they navigated through a labyrinth maze of blades. It was a cemetery of weapons from fallen warriors of the land, amassed by the gatekeeper of these parts. Despite the high caliber of gear that adorned the terrain, the four dared not touch and risk disrupting their careful order. Finally, in the foggy distance they spotted a lumbering mass. Its silhouette revealed innumerable hands pulling swords from the ground, only to shuffle them back with meticulous organization. The tarnished four approached the being with caution, but realized they could not break its fixation to the task. Only when they unsheathed their armaments did its attention peak. The gatekeeper stretched upright and turned to glare with piercing, beaded eyes. Outer limbs reached towards cataloged blades with blind familiarity and gripped tight. Yet more hands beckoned a welcome toward the fog gate embedded in its belly, taunting the tarnished four to try and enter. The four braced themselves for the strong foe ahead as an eerie melody and chant pierced the night. Time to Elder Tubby. Elder Tubby Snoo, the placekeeper. Lines of fiber pulsated with information as signals from across the world transmitted into the Elder's system. The world gathered at its feet and stared up at the canvas displayed on its belly. It was a masterful collaboration effort from an unpredictable hive mind, each pixel placed in perfect chaos over the course of four days. It was beautiful. It was art. It was coming to an end. The Elder's body began to sparkle as pixels began floating off into the sky. The community watched with melancholy as their masterpiece inexorably faded into white. The elders stared down with benevolent eyes, which conveyed one last message of hope to all. This will always be our place. Well, that's a lot to unpack. Initially, I believed the alien elder tubbies to be some sort of deep space equivalent to the Earth ones. But there's four Earth elder tubbies and three aliens, so that doesn't really add up. It appears that Elder Tubby Zoo was taking care of a group of what were called tubby nymphs, providing them content to watch from his belly screen. The content may be coming from the very same signal that the elder babies were broadcasting. Nymphs, in nature, are usually a life cycle phase before adults in creatures that go through metamorphosis. So the content emanating from Elder Tubby Zoo is likely nurturing these creatures to mature, likely into Elder Tubbies themselves. 
It is at this point that I want to bring up a theory that my viewers angrily and repeatedly expressed in the comments of the last video. The Elder Tubbies are perhaps intended to be the Teletubbies as they aged. The Teletubbies were babies of some sort of eldritch species, and this is just what happened to them and the world as they grew up. In this world, the Teletubbies as we know them, from the actual television series, are actually tubby nymphs. We're seeing them in the future, when fully grown to their unknowable, otherworldly potential. The entire world is the same, it just got older. It's possible that four of these tubby nymphs became the quote-unquote tarnished four that fought to get into the stomach of Elder Tubby Erd. It may be that if not exposed to the Holy Tubby signal, they could be developmentally stunted, resulting in a tubby with evil intentions, or er, some shit. Elder Tubby Erd is likely the protector of whatever signal that Zoo is broadcasting a tummy portal that could transport whoever crosses through to the source of the signal, potentially a gateway to the mother being. The tarnished four likely want to stamp out this signal. Finally, Elder Tubby Snoo, the placekeeper. I believe that Snoo is the central terminal for the tubby signal, whatever it may be, displaying it in grand fashion for all the tubby nymphs to see. This planet would be like a mass nursery for the tubbies, allowing the species to grow and prosper untarnished. He was called the Placekeeper because he kept this grand signal alive in his holy spot. Until he didn't because it died by turning into sparkles, like if Tom Holland's Spider-Man died during Pride Month. Without the display of the tubby signal, more nymphs may be in danger of becoming tarnished. But that was about to change. The perpetual cries of the Elder Tubbies echoed through the vast empty space. Their cacophony turned into a sharp melody and then became imperceptibly shrill until it was audible to the mortal ears. Instead, the cry of the Eclipse was heard deep in the souls of all things living, sending the world into an era of existential dread. The unending colic could only be quelled by the arrival of Mother, prophesied to take away all pain. However, her promised advent went unanswered for what felt like millennia. Life went from daily anticipation, met with disappointment, to desperate clinging onto a rumor of relief, to despondent whispers of legend nearly long forgotten, until she arrived when the dread of the world was at its zenith. The visual feat was incredible. The heavens were illuminated by the ever-brilliant birth of stars, while simultaneously being swallowed by the inescapable gravity of voidal spheres, emerging from infinite fingertips of palms poised in prayer. An ornate crest of galaxies and ancient symbols danced delicately about the edge of her event horizon, orbiting a pitch-black void at its center. Her scale was beyond gargantuan, beyond cosmic, beyond words and time. It was her in full, unending glory. Mother Void, the Maker. Beneath her crown and within the void peered outward the eyes of Mother down at her children below. The elder babies gazed upwards at the spectacle of their maker. Pained faces yearning for respite. Fret not, children. Mother is here now, and all will be okay. In an instant, Mother pierced open the aura of her void, unleashing a vacuum that silenced the weeping children, absorbing not only light and sound, but also negativity, despair, doubt, anxiety, fear, loneliness, anger, sadness, all absorbed by Mother. Tears of burden rolled down her cheeks. All that remained was an intense quiet across the stars, and every living being stared up at the skies in anticipation. A melodious hum swelled into existence. It was a million angelic tones of lullaby, previously hindered by distance and muffled through static, but no longer. The song source now stood before them all, and she began her tune with an unbelievable symphony. The elder baby's cry was quelled, liberating the world. The melody rang, resonant in the core of every being, persisting for millennia beyond, and bringing about an epoch of peace across the lands. It was the birth of a golden era. It was the age of tranquility. It was time for Teletubbies. Well, that really ties a bow on all of it nicely. Let's break down that final piece of lore, shall we? No? Fuck you, you sarcastic piece of shit. Mother Void birthed these creatures and placed them all around the galaxy to broadcast her glorious holy signal through their torso screens, using their bodies as a vessel. God, what I wouldn't do for a Mother Void to use my body as her vessel if you know what I mean. Cause I don't. She left her children, and they became forlorn without her. 
where that's usually the dad's job. Even her holy signal was not enough to keep them pure in her absence. They grew larger, fearful looking, and lonelier, surrounding her ever fading signal like moths to a flame, dreading the day that it would one day be gone, until she returned and ushered in a final age of peace between her subjects. No more tarnished ones, no more loneliness, no more horniness, no more hunger, all beings unified under the Mother Void signal. At the end of the day, it really is true what they say. It's time for Teletubbies. Whatever the fuck that means. Well, that's it. Except for one pattern that I noticed that I didn't quite know what to make of. The repeated suggestion of crawling inside another creature's stomach. Like the Elder Moon Baby's gut. Or the Elder Tubby Erd's doorway tummy. Well, are you getting in the giant magical sky baby's horrifically stretched out belly button or not? I don't know what to make of it. I just had it in my notes and I'm putting in because I thought it was notable. The Elder Tubbies. A nightmarish eldritch version of the children's TV series, Teletubbies, that delves into the mysterious and bizarre elements of the original show, raising questions about the nature of the world and other surreal elements of the program. Elder Tubbies shows what happens to the tubbies as they grow up. And by grow up, I mean grow into massive creatures of unknowable scale. The creator of Elder Tubbies, Jar Arts, created these new depictions of the now older classic four tubbies, but also expanded the world with three new additions, Elder Tubbies Zoo, Snoo, and Erd. While I initially thought this was just a bit of world building to flesh out the tubby universe and expand upon the implications of a tubby species, I now see that these three new tubbies have a symbolic connection to the themes of the original Elder Tubbies, and the original TV show as well. Let's start with Zoo, obviously named for the iconic Denzel Curry album. Zoo. Elder Tubby Zoo represents the invention and integration of the internet, hence why he is the pioneer. This might sound a bit far-fetched, but bear with me here. Teletubbies had televisions in their bodies, and television was a very popular way that most people would consume video media at that time. If the world were to age, there would likely be tubby forms that represent other ways to consume video media. Elder Tubby Zoo amplifies faint signals from faraway places to show new content, content alien to anything these new tubby nymphs have seen. It even specifies that his weird collection of curved back penises is actually a tunnel of antennae, tools that receive or send out signals. This is why he also comes before the two new tubbies. You'll see why, but the existence of Snoo and Erd could not be relevant without first establishing Elder Tubby Zoo. Elder Tubby Snoo, as many of my viewers pointed out in the comments of the other Elder Tubbies videos, is a reference to Reddit. You can see from his weird little head dongle that Snoo is based off the Reddit mascot, who is also named Snoo, so that's enough proof for me. Elder Tubby Snoo is more specifically a reference to the subreddit r slash place. Abridged from the Wikipedia article on the subject, r slash place is a recurring collaborative project hosted on Reddit. Originally launched on April Fool's Day 2017, the experiment involved an online canvas located at a subreddit called r slash place. Users could edit the canvas by changing the color of a single pixel with a replacement from a 16 color palette. After each pixel was placed, a timer prevented the user from placing any more pixels for a period of time. It was ended by Reddit administrators 72 hours after its creation. Over a million users edited the canvas, placing a total of 16 million pixels. And, at the time of the experiment ending, over 90,000 users were actively viewing or editing the canvas. The parallels to the writing about Elder Tubby Snoo are palpable. The belly screen was the subreddit canvas. The users watching were the viewers staring up at his belly. And the Reddit administrator shutting the program down is when Snoo's belly turned into a bunch of sparkles and went away. I would be remiss if I did not mention that many viewers expressed a dislike for this concept in the comments. And I can understand where they're coming from. I even thought the same thing at first. Oh boy, another Redditor inflating the importance of an already pompous message board where people mostly just butt actually each other. If you bear with me to the end, I think I can piece together what the author is saying by including these references, and why, after looking deeply into the source material, I think it really improves the story. I don't even like Reddit. Elden Tubby Erd, the gatekeeper. He represents a challenge. To get through his tummy to the other side, to see something that is very hard to obtain access to. Elden Tubby Erd represents the video game Elden Ring. He has the logo for the game as his little head dongle, and he's the only tubby in the story that has Elden as his name prefix rather than Elder. Elden Ring, for those who don't know, is an RPG game notorious for its intense difficulty. The game all but requires you to temporarily turn into a basement dweller and spend days of your life without natural light to figure it out. 
People who are shit at video games, like myself, complain about this because you cannot change the difficulty setting like other games. So it means that not everybody who buys it can enjoy the full experience. Some people say that this enhances the experience because you have to work for it and learn about the game and its mechanics more deeply by spending hours dying. Personally, I wouldn't charge someone with no legs for a bus ticket and tell them they have to use the stairs to get on or they can't ride. I think that's actually a fucking crime, but sure, sell my dumbass Elden Ring with no easy mode. I'm not salty. As I mentioned earlier, all three of these Elder Tubbies are connected to each other by their symbolic representation. Reddit could not exist without the internet. You could make the argument that a form of non-downloadable, disc-only version of the Dark Souls franchise could exist, but the community around the game and the consensus on its gatekeeping style of difficulty would not be nearly as popular without the internet. It's the place that both of those communities were built upon. You might be saying, sure, they all connect with each other, but what the hell does all this have to do with the concept of Teletubbies in the first place? I got an answer for all your questions, smartass, so you might as well save them to the end. Elder Tubbies is about how TV and video media in general grew up. Not only did the Tubbies grow up, but what they represented, media viewership, grew up too. Not only did it grow up, but it distorted and changed into forms that would be unknowable to those who were watching TV when the Tubbies first came on. Like if someone showed a 2000s person TikTok, they'd be convinced that the world really did end in 2012. The new Elder Tubbies, Zoo, Erd and Snoo represent the new age of consuming media. If the Tubbies grew up, it would make sense that the landscape around them would update with the times. The Teletubbies fostered a community of fans when it was on TV. R slash Place fostered a community of fans when it's on the internet. And so did Elden Ring. I'm not sure if I would have picked the exact same examples, but I still think it's a really interesting and well-constructed way to develop this concept. Also, I I'm literally extrapolating, so Jar Arts, if you see this, I'm sorry. I love your work. I'm an idiot. I might have gotten all this wrong. Who fucking knows? There are still some things I'm confused about in this lore. Mostly Mother Void, and who is the dad? It's not me. I have no idea what the hell all that's about, but if this video does well enough, maybe I'll come back and check out some more weird spooky shit. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or I'll put a TV in your bowels. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. <laughs>